What I'm going to do is do a, a variant of the Swedish fire torch. I'm going to start battening the wood. Obviously, it's too small to span the whole thing. And I want it split into quarters. And I'll use a, a wedge to actually part it, but we'll start it off using the tracker. Right, so when the logs like this, this is one of the reasons I want an extended tang. I want to straighten this up to give it a bit more real estate uh, when it comes to chopping and to save me hitting the handle slabs, which through time is just going to destroy them. Right, too difficult for the blade to get through this large knot here. I know if I keep hitting it, it's just going to break it. So, I'll get this wedge in. Come in for the top end. Start again. Right, you need to know your knife's limitations, and I feel because of the size of the knife and the thickness of the spine that this knife 
couldn't take this type of punishment without the risk of snapping the blade. So what I'm going to do is put a wedge in here and try and break it down that way. Whew. Still no budging. Just heard it crack there. Yeah. Let's have a look at this knot. Oh God, I can't even break it now. Need a wedge. So this just shows you how tough. Knots can be, and people say, oh, pines are softwood. My arse. Look at that, it's still there. So let's see, take off with the axe. There you go. So that's how tough a knot can be. So if you ever come across that type of situation, be wise with your knife, just like I've done there. Take it out and get other tools to do the job. And even the axe struggled with that. So what I'm going to do then is take off the inside quarters of the rest of this, just with the axe. And then uh, we'll prep the fire for here rather than risk breaking the knife. Here we have the Swedish fire torch or the variant of it, split down into quarters and I've taken out the inner edges of the quarter using the axe just because we felt that the knots through this particular piece of pine were too tough for the knife so I've sat it into a base here and just packed up some coals from my last fire and now I'm going to stuff in the middle with the chips that I've got left over and we'll create some um, feather sticks also to go in it which we'll use the knife for May as well use all these chips that we got from the wood itself. Just pack it down. All right, now as we'll do is I'll set my grill on top of this, and the weight of the pot just kind of holds it together once it gets lit. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll get some feather sticks done just to start the fire. Right, so we're batting through this to try and get some kindling and to create some feather sticks. So obviously this is a lot more manageable, the size is more appropriate to the tool. Right, and as you can see, we've got Royal today to help us with the battening. So try a wee bit of splitting, a couple of knots in this piece, but should do it no bother. There we go. Right, there you go, we've done that. Relatively quick. Right, let's get a couple of feather sticks done with it. Obviously in the ideal world you want pieces of wood like this that have no knots in it to actually do your feather sticks. But this is what you've got and this is what you've got to use. So just change your feather stick size accordingly to the piece of wood that you've got.
right so i'll gather up some of these shavings i uh, don't waste too much time it's okay that it's not the best i've had it's because it's as small as well and this is a large log that i've used but it's producing that type of shavings which i'll be able to stuff at the top of the swedish fire log and with a decent fire steel should hopefully get it going so we've got some fat wood here in these small branches and I'm going to cut them down to pellet size for the fire torch. Right, so here we are. This is only maybe what three and a half inches across this piece of wood, and it's took up most of the expansion of the blade. But what I want to show you is when I have it here, this hook or wire breaker potentially could be a, a weak point because when it comes to hitting it with my baton, like so. It's a lot of stress, which I feel in time that could possibly snap. Uh, I'm not saying it is going to, but I just feel that's a weakness in the blade design for my liking anyway. And I feel if the blade was maybe six mil thick, we'd get away with a lot more stress on this point. Right, so here's the small Brock tracker knife done in 01 tool steel. I've been using it now for about two weeks and I've used it every day, putting it through its field testing. So some of the things I'd like to see changed in this to suit my needs in the woods is one, the spine thickness. I think it should be up to about six mil thick. It's just no heavy enough to take the punishment that I put my knives through and I feel that would really improve the knife's capability for my uses. The next one then is this notch here, the wire breaker. I feel that should just be removed. I feel that's a weakness, especially when the blade's so thin at the tip, which is really handy for doing all your splitting. I've had no problems with it, no bending, but I do feel with some of the stuff that I do that I probably would snap the tip off of this especially in the cold weather another thing here at the rear you can see the scales are just slightly raised and I think that's because I've been hitting the rear of this tang to reposition the knife when it comes to battening through wood so I definitely feel it needs some form of an extended tang to improve the capability of the knife or if I kept that up I might end up just going to bursting the scales. Apart from that it's done really well, it's held an edge good and um, with the tools I had for sharpening uh, it an edge relatively quick 
and not that it needed much right enough so just a quick touch up and it really done it and it got hair shaving sharp out in the field which is good it's one of these marmite knives you either like them or you hate them and i just feel because the amount of work it's required to put in to get the best out of all the features on the knife it's not everybody's cup of tea but its performance as a bushcrafting blade it's done fantastic really surprised at the capabilities at the draw section here i think i'm needing a lot more time spent working with the quarter round to get some better shavings done but that will just come through with practice another thing is as well i rather it didn't have the stamped logo on the blade to me that's just another weakness i feel where it could go wrong um, I'd rather have it lasered or nothing at all, just have it sterile. But I really liked the knife and it came in a cracking leather sheath also. Yeah, I could definitely recommend one of these. But the suggestions I've done, that's for my personal use in the woods. David Crawford's done a fantastic job with the blade. Really pleased at his performance. And I will be moving on to the large model next. So I'm going to have months and months of fun out in the woods over the winter putting this knife through its paces. It's a real joy to use and yeah, I could definitely recommend one of these.